I think that there was a pattern that Father Herman, realizing the amount of wife beating that was going on, uh, not only among the uh, mixed families, but also among the native families. Women were not treated like queens, <laughs> contrary to modern political correctness. And uh, he gave shelter. I consider her the first woman native educator in the history of Alaska. The woman, whose name was Sophia, learned how to read and write Russian in one year and came to speak Russian well. Soon, several orphan girls of Aleut and Creole extraction joined Sophia. In 1831, I observed their agricultural work in a blossoming state. The orphan girls, healthy and apparently joyful, showed that they were happy with their lives. Seeing this, I ordered the government office to subsidize Herman, and his place was called New Valon. The former chief managers of the colony several times rode out to Spruce Island in Badarkas at night so as not to be noticed by people, and then kept watch on what Father Herman was doing. I must confess that I myself heard such slanderous tales about Father Herman that I had begun to write back to St. Petersburg about him even before I had met him. Father Herman immediately came to see me. He explained local conditions to me, how poor the Aleuts were, and he asked me to protect them. When you left Kodiak, either through God's wrath or his holy workings for our good, the epidemic continued for a while. It caused the death of many of the young women and left their children orphans. We have returned from a 200-mile trip to the islands and to the coasts of our colonies. One of the most pleasant memories which we brought back from this trip was that of Father Herman. He had a clear voice full of liveliness, which was the reflection of the nimbleness of a refined mind. His movements were energetic as a man of 30 years old. He had a sense of humor, and it was difficult to understand how he could have retained so much elasticity and interest in everything after having lived 40 years in solitude. I asked the father why he was seeking his salvation in this melancholy solitude, and why he had voluntarily separated himself from his fellow citizens, whom he was supposed to be converting. You think that I am supposed to possess the truth, and my seeming idleness displeases you. But do you know what the truth is and where you can find it? This discussion displeased me, and I gave the bold monk to understand that we could make better use of our time. My diocese is not very large, only a few hundred people. If only we could have a chapel and a bell. This wish I could fulfill. A few months later, a ship brought the necessary boards and beams, and with the strong help of the Aleuts, the chapel was built. See, there is a very close bond between Fyodor Petrovich Wrangel and Father Herman. Wrangel met St. Herman when he was a very young man, and he never, never lost his respect and love for St. Herman. The local inhabitants used to go to the elder. They approached the chapel and they heard superb choral singing, a multitude of voices singing. They wondered where the people had come from. They opened the door into the little chapel, and there Father Herman stood alone, reading, chanting half aloud. Father Herman used to feed birds with dried fish, and they in great number would nest near his cell. Father Herman was also seen feeding the bears. Under his cell there lived ermines. This little animal, after giving birth to its litter, is unapproachable, yet the elder would feed them with his own hands. With the death of the elder, both the birds and the beasts disappeared. Even the garden would not give forth crop if someone were to care for it willingly. Thirty years will pass after my death. All those who live now on Spruce Island will be dead. You alone will remain alive, and you will be old and poor. And then they will remember me. When I die, kill the bull, because his labors for me are already done. When the villagers had come to Spruce Island, they had presented the elder with a young calf and the elder had raised and nurtured it. When the old man died, the others were unwilling to kill this bull. The next day, the animal read headfirst into a tree and died. The elder said, 
When I die, do not tell them at the port, but bury me yourselves. After a short while, he lowered his head onto Garasim's chest. His face suddenly began to shine, and the cell was filled with a divine fragrance. And they all knew that the elder was dead. His pupil did not dare not inform the authorities at the port of the elder's death, because everyone loved him. In answer to his news, he received instructions not to proceed with the burial, but to wait until a priest came and brought a coffin. As soon as the coffin had been made, the weather worsened, and a fierce wind blew so that it was not possible for the priest to set out, and the elder's body was left lying for twelve days. Garasim and the other pupils resolved to bury the elder, and they had no sooner placed the body in the earth when the weather became calm and clear. At this point, the priest arrived with a fine coffin, but he decided not to exhume the body, as it obviously pleased both God and the elder to have it buried as it was. My former student, he told me that for a long time, he thought that Father Herman was alive, and that you just called in Father Herman and he would come. People from all over come here and they, to take the holy water, and this is a normal part. The people come over in the skiffs from the village of Uzinki. Even though they, they kept the traditions perhaps uh, more closely in the past, people still come over here, and everything is sacred here to them and, and they take this holy water home and it's a regular part of their lives and we've seen many miracles um, have been recorded um, by people coming here. We had an old man caretaken over there at Monk Lagoon, the relic already in Kodiak. And he was star star not starving but he was really hungry, never had any food for a long time for whatever reason. And he prayed to Father Herman and he told me he went down to the beach and there was a big silver salmon in a pool, in a shallow pool. He went and got that fish and he had a really good dinner. My brother was affected by Father Herman because he had really horrible eyesight. His eyes were failing, failing, failing. My mother took him to Monk's Lagoon and she got the dirt from the grave and put it on his eyes and the next thing you know, he never had a bit of trouble for the rest of his life. Yeah, your mom used to say you had fell and cut yourself and it got infected, and no matter what she tried to do, it would not heal. And that's when they took you to Monk's Lagoon, mm -hmm. and they put dirt from Father Herman's grave on that sore and washed it off with his water. From there, it healed. Up when the war began in the year 1940, they was going to harm Kodiak because the base was very full at that time. It was just full of people. There was guards all over, all over, all different kinds, sailors, marines, and so forth, five different tribes. They were all ready. But Bozzi did not want him here. St. Herman did not want him here. It closed Kodiak Island. They couldn't find Kodiak Island because it was thick with fog. That's when they bombed Pearl Harbor down there. Today, people address prayers to St. Herman. Before that, people appeal to him, but they also said, we pray for you. 